What is going on, everybody? This is Nick here at Y for Turbo. We are playing NHL 17 be a GM mode with our Colorado Avalanche. And we are right up here, if we go to the calendar, at the trade deadline. We're one day before here. So here's the deadline. Here we are. We got a lot of trades to make that we decided to hold off until this point. Um, there's a couple that I want to do right away. And after those are done, we might look through our pool and see if there's anybody else we want to ship out. So let's just get right into it. Um, the first thing I want to say, though, before we do that is um, these trades are all inspired by actual comments. Um, so here's some of those comments if you guys want to check them out. Boom, boom, boom. So one of the things is on this channel, it's like 100% community uh, maintained. Um, I wouldn't be able to make a lot of these really hard decisions if it wasn't for you guys. And thank you. Thank you for leaving these comments down below. If you do want to be in the next episode, leave some suggestion comments down below, uh, most likely for the draft, because I don't think we're making the playoffs. So uh, let me know down below who we should try to get in the draft. Uh, who we should re-sign, who we should pick up a free agency, really anything. And you can be featured in the next video, your comment right ahead of the actual gameplay. So now that that's out of the way, we'll go with one of the ultimate suggestions everybody has been talking about. Now, first, let's line up our side. This first one, I want to get rid of some older guys on the offensive side. So one of the biggest uh, complaints was... Get rid of Soderberg. He's helping you in faceoffs, helping you in games. Got a terrible contract for what you're trying to go for. And the other guy was, let's see here. Wilson was one of them you guys are talking about, but I think I have another plan for him. Uh, Colborn here. Now, Colborn's been with the uh, the abs forever, so it's uh, you know a little bittersweet. But I think this will be nice. A new uh, Both guys getting a new start on a team that is playoff bound. New York Islanders and some of you guys know where it's going some of you guys might think you know where it's going but I've been trying to force kind of like a tra well I was trying to force a trade last time for uh Dal Cole thank you guys for telling me how to pronounce that uh man would this be a good guy to get um totally but I think we're gonna have to go with Barzell which I think actually in the long run might be a better idea uh he's already higher overall and he's lower in age right-handed center playmaker this is definitely a first line center of the future um or him down the middle with uh with mckinnon up top so you know maybe him mckinnon rather and then barzell on the second line or maybe barzell can play winger at some point because he doesn't have the best face-offs at this point so maybe he's more of a winger kind of guy so barzell is the choice here now one of the biggest things um the Islanders are facing off with is if we want to get up to this amount of uh, actual trade value, we have to, you know, add a couple of players in here because you know it just doesn't work. You know, there, it's not a one for one kind of thing. They have 50 contracts. And if we trade for like a nobody, they got to send somebody down via waivers to take these guys in because they're on a cup run. They, they need these guys on the, the wing and in the center help them win some games so they don't want to throw anybody down on waivers so our best bet at this point is to pick up another young guy here and this is what i'm thinking uh just clearing out another spot so that somebody they don't really care about can be sent down um and i think this should this should be okay and it'll give them the chance to slide somebody out that they don't really need that could be scratched rather than trying to slide out multiple people for multiple things. But yeah, I could be wrong. I mean, I, I haven't simulated any of these trades and this right now can't be done. So one of the things we're most likely going to have to do is what you guys, you guys are all saying, by the way, that this is probably the best idea. Get rid of this Winnipeg pick. Winnipeg's doing apparently really well. So it's going to be a mid late rounder, probably late, um, and that kind of evens out trade value, especially since they don't want to give these guys up necessarily. The thing that you guys are saying, though, is that makes this semi-realistic. You know, it maybe in real life this kind of thing wouldn't happen, but for this GM mode, um, they're saying that after this year, 
Tavares will likely leave if he doesn't get some help. These guys can be awesome for the playoffs for them, even though they're not super elite, but they can really help them for the playoffs, and this first-round pick could really help. So let's see if this goes through. I don't think it will because they don't want to give these guys up. If not, um, we've got a second we can throw in, which actually might be a good one to keep, you guys were saying. But at the same time, nobody wanted me to hoard picks. And so it's. I think I got one comment that said get a couple picks or keep a couple picks, which we are going to keep our first-round pick uh, and maybe like one or two other guys so we can maybe trade up get that top five pick and uh, get somebody worthwhile and then just start building from there. So let's see if this goes through. Um, I think this is totally fine. Getting an elite prospect and a top six guy from, you know, the first is basically taking care of one of these guys. And then these two are paying for the other. So I'm fine with that, especially because we're clearing some cap. We're clearing some old guys on the roster. Let's see if this works. If not, we'll throw in. Yeah. I rejected. Let's see if we can throw in a second here because we don't have any thirds or anything. Um, I could throw in next year's third, but let's just do this year's. The next couple years, I guess, are kind of shallow. Um, this one should go through. I'm kind of afraid. Let's at least try to get a fourth back. I'm kind of afraid because that's a little too much, I feel like. But at the same time, you guys really want an elite prospect coming in. And I, I agree. Like, this is going to help. These two are going to help us immensely in the future. Colborn and Soderbergh are going to help us now. Very little. Soderbergh, a little more. Let's see if this goes through. Okay. It will go through. Should I cancel it? Maybe we can get a little better than the fourth. That's kind of cheating, isn't it, though? Maybe we can try for this third. Maybe not. I don't think so. Maybe we can get the third. Yeah. I think it's right on there. So it's the fourth or nothing. I'm going to take the fourth. I'm glad I went for that so we can at least get something else out of it. Um, I think this is actually pretty balanced on both sides. Um, the first really helps. You know, these two guys for these two guys, no way. These guys win. You know what I mean? But then you add the first and these three are looking a little better and you add the second in. It's looking pretty good. Whereas New York's like, okay, well, we keep these two. Um, we're getting a little older, but then these two are basically players. These two picks are players in the future for New York. So they're starting their pseudo rebuild a little bit later, whereas we're trying to do it right now. So let's see if it works. You know, if you guys agree, if you don't, I've just listened to the top up voted comments. <laughs> Not really. I listen to, I read everybody's, um, but it definitely helps when you guys got a lot of upvotes on your comment, because that makes me think, that uh, it's right. Um, okay, they think it'll contribute to their success. So it's a little heavy handed on our side. But I think honestly, we won that trade. Um, I think the the only reason the computer took that was because of the first and the second. I, I could I think they could care less about the actual uh, the other guys here. So let me clean up this uh, real quick. And then we'll jump back into it. See you in a second. Okay, so here is another example of a commoners pick. Um, now, I did attempt to get um, a couple other players. Uh, I was just kind of looking at the trades. I didn't, you know, like simulate any because I feel like that's a little bit like cheating. But I was trying to get, uh, oh, what was his name? He was on Chicago. Uh, I think it was something cat. But it's uh, a um, Debrincat, Debrincat, as you guys were saying. That's his name. That's a hilarious name. Um, Chicago just doesn't have anybody that I like. The only other person, the thing is, they are so far over the cap. The only other player that they could have really given away with lower than like 100% trade value was, uh, was Sharp. And he's still pretty high trade value so just doing something like johnson uh i would have to add in way too much and just to you know it was just like max trade value on the right side here so this maybe is a little unrealistic and i don't think this will go through i just threw kapanen in because he's a lower prospect as opposed to you know these other really high-end prospects that the maple leafs have and that's kind of the reason i feel like this might go through um they're not doing very well this season but I think adding this elite player who's really not that old to bolster their D-line 
um, and just make their back end really good makes sense. And they do want him. This is just a no name AHL top two guy that's like 67 overall. So I just threw him in there to fill up a roster spot. And Carrick now is kind of stuck in the middle playing top six minutes. You guys are saying, I really need to get him offensive defenseman right handed, and he gets very good um, very quickly. So I was all over that. Um, right now, he's looking pretty average, but I definitely think he can get a lot better because you guys said so. Uh, I don't think we, I, I don't know, we might have to add in a pick or something. But I think Kapanen might be a long shot. But let's try it right now as is. They don't want to give either way, so I don't think it's going to work. Um, if anything, we could probably get like a first or a second out of them. Because actually, Carrick's trade value isn't super high. You guys are saying he's one to go after because right now he doesn't have that tr high of trade value. Because he is just a top six guy. But he can get up to like 89 in a couple years, which is insane. So let's try it right now. I don't think this will go through. But let's see. Yeah, rejected. Okay, they're totally unwilling. I don't think we're going to be able to get Kapanen. Let's try one one more thing. Actually, I did want to add in uh, possibly Blake Como because he does actually have a little tiny sliver of trade value, but I don't think they want him, which is, uh, which is a problem, obviously. But yeah, look at this trade value. That's actually pretty good. So let's see if uh, this will go through. Kind of bumping us over, bumping them over the... Uh, but that might actually work because then they replace the right wing. They replace the D. But they just get some, you know, it's mostly Johnson here. I don't know. This this would not happen in real life. I'm just going to say it. But if we can do it, I'll take it. See if that goes through. Yeah, they're unwilling. So might have to just, I don't know. We could try a pick. I just don't want to, you know, we already have given away so many picks. We still have our first. Um, I'll give away the Islanders fourth. Or let's do the Rangers fourth. But I don't think this will work. I think we'll just, yeah, I think we're just going to have to get rid of Kapanen, get rid of Como, and do a pick here, which, um, yeah, let's see if we can get the Sens second pick. This might actually work because they want to give it away, and it doesn't look totally even, but it could work here, like a one for one. I think this might be okay. We might have to swindle a little bit here, but this might work. They've won less games than us, actually. Uh, totally unwilling. Let's see if we can do a third. Um, or this one, this second, actually. I just want to get something back. Totally unwilling again, really. Wow. Yeah, I might have to go. I don't want to do the fourth, really, because that's like, uh, that's actually not too bad. If I can do maybe a fourth, Two fourths here. Yeah, I mean that should be okay. I I don't think that's really what. Why won't it let me? There we go. Yeah, let's see if this will work. Okay, they believe it contributed to success, so it's pretty even on both sides. You guys really wanted me to get rid of them. That's a terrible contract for Johnson, but it will be moved over to a Leafs team that he can actually be used on, and they can start winning some games most likely next season and we get a rad defender so that's awesome thank you guys for the suggestions um if you guys are upset about the trades make your voice heard in the next uh trade deadline episode all these trades were inspired by real people who commented down below so um i literally lifted them right from the comments i showed the comments at the beginning of the episode and just wrote down combinations of what i thought would work and we actually did it um, that's one thing I love doing, just seeing what works and what doesn't. That's why I'm so skeptical when things go to that menu where it's like, oh, this guy would have to be moved down. Uh, I hope they get rid of that because that's kind of like cheating, but, um, that helped us in that last one to get a little more out of it. So, um, we've got really, really good team going here, uh, in the next couple years, I think will be awesome. So, um, yeah, you can see the lines are just all messed up on every single end. Uh, we could also trade Wilson and Landeskog. These are two guys that I wouldn't mind getting rid of at some point. Landeskog might be cool to keep. You guys are saying if he can jump, um, it would definitely benefit us. So let me uh, mess around with these lines real quick. Just get them okay. Um, I might bring a player up because I want to I wanna scratch this uh, and Adria Ghetto guy, even though he's really actually a good faceoff man uh, as a right winger. But, you know, he could help us lose games, but 
I think I might keep Host saying up here. That's kind of fun. You guys were saying bring up uh, Sanheim. So I'll do that. But let me let me get this all together for you. And then we'll see in like uh, 0.2 seconds for you guys. Probably like 15 minutes for me because I got to go get a drink. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys in a second. All right. So there's some weird lines here. And uh, I didn't bring Sanheim up because... Totally forgot that we got Carrick, so I need a spot for him. Didn't want to throw anybody else down. Didn't want to scratch him, and we'll bring him up next year 120%. Uh, hopefully, we can just, yeah, we'll just dump Tootin off, bring uh, everybody up, and then you guys are saying play Sanheim way above what he usually is, so I'll put him in the top four, and uh, you guys were even saying pair him with Barry, so maybe we'll just do that, or maybe we'll put Carrick. No, Carrick's right-handed. Um you know, maybe we'll put uh, Big Ross up here and then put Santa in here. But he's still down in the AHL, doing top two minutes, made sure he's on, like, every single line. So getting his minutes, and he's still considered, like, a minor defender. So it's I think it's fine. Um, hopefully it won't impact too much, and I hope you guys aren't mad. I just couldn't figure it out. I didn't want to make more trades that we'd regret later. Um so, yeah, I think this would be good. I guess we could trade, like, Tootin or something like that. Um, I actually like this. We're going to lose some games, but each line kind of has a veteran presence with some young guns on it except the fourth line, which is fine. The fourth line can just be that grind old guy line. Um, Ratnan with McKinnon and Yakupov. Everybody's grown on this line. I love it. Um, hopefully, I mean, this these guys could really help each other out. I was thinking of put, putting Gregoranko up there on the first line. Let me know if you guys would rather see that next year. Um, now, second line, I put uh, Jost here because of his face-offs. Because um, I think if he can win face-offs and Landis Guy can do pretty well, um, he has a more he has more ability, or actually, it's more likely that he'll just he'll grow a little bit and his trade value will go up. Um, and we do have the rest of the year, remember, to to go through with that. So. He'll help. Landis Guy will help out Jost, Yost, and Gregorenko. Third line has Barzell, which is not as good at faceoffs, uh, which kind of sucks, but he's got a really great shooting category, uh, especially that slap shot. So hopefully this will kind of help him on the third line. He's got some really great like stats that stand out and others that are way low, so it's kind of strange. Uh, and then Hosang can help him out as well. He's got a decent shot too. What's his passing? His passing isn't actually that good. What's Barzell's? They're the same. And then Wilson can help them as a veteran presence who actually has pretty good passing. So hopefully this third line can just stay pluses and get some pucks in the net. And then the fourth line, you guys know who these guys are. Um, showed you the defensive side, and I'll just show you the AHL real quick here. Um, no real changes. You can see the defense here. These are really our own, only uh, prospects here. Wait, is uh, didn't I have? Oh, yeah, those are our only prospects. Sanheim and then Siemens. Um, and then I don't even think we... You guys were saying try to find a goalie. We really don't even have a goalie in anywhere. So that kind of sucks. And I was going to try to sign some sort of free agent. Um, but we don't really have anybody. Lemieux here. So that'll be nice. He's gone up uh, a little bit there from, what, 73 when we picked him up. So that's good. And then Nieto and Bork are actually up at 81, which is really good. So... Hopefully, these guys can all just kind of grow. Um, we just need some... Oh, I'm going to bring this guy up to the second line because he's top nine forward. And uh, we'll just put this guy in the third line. I didn't actually... I wasn't looking at these guys we already had, but it's kind of interesting seeing... You know, this guy you know, might be something for us in the future. Who knows? Just a cheap guy to keep. Uh, Grimaldi as well. So um, that's the changes right now. Like I said, if you guys don't like it, let me know down in the comments because it does nothing but help. And, uh, you know, for next time it can, it can teach me, you guys know, I'm not the best, uh, trader or, uh, drafter or GM player, but we like this channel cause we all talk to each other. Right. So this team, uh, if it can do one thing, well, I think it's lose. Um, as you guys can see, we've got not a great, uh, you know, back end here. Um, Stolarz apparently gets really good. So this will actually be really nice. Uh, Bernier's gone after this year. So Stolarz can either take the reins or we can sign a free agent. But we're going to be cutting a lot of people, I feel like, come, come this offseason. So let's just, um, let's just go ahead and simulate through. 
We could attempt to trade Tutner Wilson for something. Um, I think we're fine. I think we can just kind of keep going. These were the big trades that you guys suggested. So we've had three episodes in a row full of trades. So that's pretty awesome. Um, it still says our offense is 90 and our defense is 90. I don't think so, game. Um, not even going to look at free agents. I don't have enough roster spots, and I can't really sell anybody at this point because uh, that would be cheating. So we're going – we win our first game, really. Maybe there's some serious chemistry on this team. There's another win. Wow, two in a row. We always, at the beginning of the month, uh, we'll go ahead and win a couple games, but – it's, oh my God, are you guys serious? Are we going to win every game this month? That would actually be hilarious. I, I would not even be, I'd be slightly upset, but I, I couldn't be mad. That That is just so funny. Um, there's some, okay, here comes the losses. Let's go. Lose, lose. Oh my God, are you kidding? Did we make a better team? We get rid of, what is happening? We get rid of our... Well, he was our highest overall defender, but Barry jumped him, I think. Wait, I think they adjusted the overall. So so Johnson actually went down to like an 86, 80. He was 87, and Barry was 88. Yeah, so, wow, we're actually winning some games here. There's some losses. Let's win back-to-back to, -back to or lose back-to-back -to, -back to Detroit. That would be helpful. Um, I'm just going to go up two weeks here. I can't believe that we're winning any games. Look at uh, the Rampage. Our AHL affiliate, 40, 16, and 7. That's not bad at all. Cool. There's three losses in a row. That'll definitely help. There's four losses in a row. That will definitely help out. And that's good that we're losing against uh, St. Louis. Uh, good we're losing against Edmonton, too. Or actually, we won against them. <laughs> I saw that at 4 to 1, and I'm like, oh, we couldn't have scored four goals. <laughs> You're wrong. Um, man, I'm not liking these wins. We're, tra we're trading away the farm, and we're still getting wins. 36 wins on the season. I did not think we were going to break 25. That is incredible. So let's get to this last um, St. Louis game. I'm not going to do the Johnny Superb Man last five games, simulate it to see if we get in the lottery because every time he does that, he ends up getting like pick number nine, even though he's the worst team in the NHL, which doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, he he has the worst luck. Um, I want to be one of those teams that's like number nine, worst in the league and gets the number one pick that's what i want okay so let's see if this uh this st louis game makes or breaks our record see if we leapfrogged anybody that would be so funny uh 82 points that's not very good a lot better than the avalanche really did last year um yeah team stats here just want to get this out of the way okay yeah look at this so 91 points they are not catching our loss our losses Let's see how far down we are in the real whole league. We are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Wow. So if we lose and these guys... Um, actually, yeah. If we lose, pretty much these three teams could jump... Oh, no. The Wings couldn't because they have less regulation wins so these two teams could actually jump us and we could be in the top six which wouldn't be bad but i thought we would have dropped a lot more games i think our team just has some decent chemistry maybe um which is pretty funny i can't believe we won like three games straight like how do you win that with like children these are literally like 19 year olds so that's how it's doing let's see who's uh getting some points here i saw 59 points on barry that's good that's really good Six goals, 53 assists. The dude is a monster. This is actually great. He hopefully will definitely grow this this offseason. He's on like every line too, so he's everywhere on the ice. Landis Gog's doing really well too, so maybe we keep him uh, and he can he can jump a little in the offseason. Maybe we trade him next year, but I feel like he's our fearless leader for now. Yakupov on that first line getting more points back. That's pretty good. And McKinnon there. So McKinnon not doing as well anymore with the plus minus, especially. 53 points in 81 games. He was a point of game player for a little bit and then just kind of fell off. So that's okay. Ratnan getting some points, but he's way negative. So some of these uh some of these players are really they're actually really getting some uh some game experience in. So that's pretty good. 
Hosang uh, did get a goal and got seven assists. He's up to 80 overall. That's always nice to see. Barzell's up to 81. So we're getting these guys some experience. And uh, you, everybody's got at least a point or two on the team. Um, everybody has at least four points, actually. And I don't know if we want to check out uh, the goalies here, Stolarz, what he's doing. Um, yeah, he's just at 79. I, he was, like, buffed to 80 for a second, but it looks like Bernier went down to 83. Uh, so, yeah, it does. I don't think it really matters. If we do lose this last game, it'll be nice, and we could potentially get leapfrogged by two teams. That would be very nice. I don't think we need to short sim it, though, because it's not like a make or break on the season. Um, you know, we have the assets to trade up in the draft. So that's why we kept a couple of them. Remember that. And we lose anyway. Let's try to go a couple days here for the regular season to end. Stop simulation. And let's see if we are very last in the NHL. That would be very cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, we can still do it. I was, I was afraid we couldn't do it. I've been like, are you serious? Okay, cool. All right. One final thing for this video. Come on. I know we could flip it, but I just want to scroll down. Um, it looks like the wings got a win. Uh, no, it looks like they they both either didn't have any more games or they actually lost. The wings did win that game, though, and went even with us, but we're ahead of them because of the uh, regulation wins. So what are we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're eighth in the line. It's not bad. Um, I think we could leapfrog up. I think it's it's in our cards to do that. So next episode, everybody, um, looks like we're going to be doing the draft. Let me know who you want in the draft. Now, most likely we're going to be moving someone like a Wilson uh, with our first round pick or something like that for maybe a lottery pick if we don't get one. And uh, then after that, we'll go for the re-sign phase. And then it'll be free agency where you guys will pick who we re-sign uh, or not who we re-sign, but who we sign in free agency. Cause I think next year will be a pivotal year for teaching all these young guns, how to play the game of hockey, the Colorado avalanche way. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you dug it, we are now on iTunes, our podcast, uh, which a new one uh, is coming out almost twice a week at this point. So go ahead and subscribe to that on, uh, on iTunes. You can write a review as well. It's really Really simple to do, and it helps me out a massive amount. There's a lot of cool things I'm talking with all these hockey YouTubers about the future of this channel and what I plan to do. So I'm very excited for that, and hopefully we can get some cool content up for you guys. So if you haven't, like and subscribe, and we will see you next time out on the ice.